There are many problems in the fields of math and science for which it is incredibly difficult to arrive at an exact solution. Many of these problems are labeled NP, which means there is no known algorithm to arrive at the solution in polynomial time. This means that as the size n of the problem increases, the time required to solve that problem, t, increases as an exponential of n or n factorial, which is much, much slower than a polynomial of n, meaning n, n squared, n cubed, and so forth. One such problem is the traveling salesman problem. In this problem, we are given a group of cities and the distances between them. Then we are asked to find the shortest path which visits each city exactly once and ends at the same city at which it started. So for example, a path could look like this, starting at A, then going to B, then going to C, then going to D, and back to A. In this case, our total length will be 2 plus 5 plus 3 plus 4. And it's pretty obvious that this will not be the best path. So how do we find the best path? One possible solution is to check every single path. However, there are n factorial of these, since for the starting city, there are n options, and then for the next city to travel to, there are n minus 1 options. And for the next city, there are n minus 2 options, and so forth. And moreover, there are better algorithms than this to find the solution to this problem. But none of them are faster than an exponential time, or 2 to the n. In order to avoid this, we instead settle for a good path rather than trying to find the best path for this group of cities. One algorithm used for doing this is called simulated annealing. This method comes from the practice of annealing, which is the gradual cooling of liquid metal. If we look at a cross section of the liquid metal, we have a bunch of ions moving randomly and interacting with each other. If we cool this quickly, we see that the ions solidify in a largely random configuration. However, if we cool it gradually, we see that the ions form a nice lattice structure, which is of the lowest possible potential and makes the metal more workable than if we cooled it down fast. The way we use this concept to give us a good answer to the traveling salesman problem is by defining a temperature T. And at each step of the algorithm, we look at our current path let's say it's a, b, c, d, a, with length l0, and compare it to an adjacent path. An adjacent path is obtained by switching the order of two cities in our path. So for example, an adjacent path could be a, c, b, d, a, with length l1. If l1 is less than l0, then we will replace our current path with the adjacent path. But if l1 is greater than l0, then we will only replace our current path with a probability of e to the l naught minus l1 divided by t. The idea behind this is that we treat the space of all possible paths as a potential where the length of each path is the value of the potential at that point. Suppose our current path is here. If we only selected better paths in this algorithm, 
then our final solution would be here, which is obviously not the best we can do in this case. But having temperature allows our path to jump up energy levels and so get over these local maxima and closer to the global minimum. And in order to so ensure that our solution settles close to the global minimum here, we decrease the temperature at each time step by some increment delta t. And this ensures that it, we're less likely to go back to our worst path and continue traveling towards the global minimum. Now we're going to see how the algorithm performs in vPython. So here we have our randomly selected starting path for a group of 10 cities, seen as red circles here. The path which visits these is shown by the white line segments connecting the cities. You can see that our initial path has a total length of 57 and a starting temperature of 5. Each time we decrease the temperature, we look at a new path. If that path is shorter than the current one, we replace our path with the new one. If the new path is longer, then there's a chance that we will reject it based on the current temperature. You should notice that as the temperature decreases, we accept less paths with longer total distances until t hits zero, at which point we will cycle through and only accept paths with a shorter total distance. For this algorithm, I decrease the temperature by one over the log of the current step number, which means that the temperature initially decreases quickly and then slows down when we get close to t equals zero. This allows our path to settle into the best solution as we're close to zero. And so here you can see we're close to zero and we still have not found the best path. Um, but now after it's reached zero, it cycles through and here it looks like a plausible best path for 10 cities. Now I've doubled the number of cities and you can already see that this makes the problem much more difficult. As you increase the number of cities, it's a good idea to decrease the rate at which you decrease the temperature, since there are many more possible solutions in this case. If we decrease the temperature less each step, then we're going to sample more of the possible solutions, which should optimize our final solution in the end. So let's watch and see what this algorithm gives us. Okay, and here you can see that it looks like we got a very plausible answer for the best path through this group of cities. It's not clear that this is the best, in fact, but it looks at least like a very good path. Another algorithm which we can use to solve these difficult problems is called the genetic algorithm. The idea behind this is that we have a population of possible solutions which we allow to evolve in time. At each time step, we take our best solutions, and these become the parents. From these, we create child solutions, which we then replace the worst solutions in our population with. In addition to this, at each step there's a slight chance that each child will mutate, which means that we just replace that child with an adjacent path. Suppose at some step we have the parent paths A, B, C, D, and back to A, and C, B, A, D, and back to C. The way cre we create children paths is by conserving the links between cities of both of these parents. So one child, we'll say it starts at city A. Since A is linked to B and D in the second parent, then we'll either go to B or D, we'll say D in this case. And then we go to the first parent and we say, since D is linked to C and A, we go to C. And since C is linked to B and D, we go to B, and then we go back to A. So that could be one of our children paths from these two parents. And then we also generate a second child using that same method in order to finish up this step. Now let's see how the algorithm performs in vPython. Here's an example of what might happen in one step of the genetic algorithm for a group of five solutions. 
The group on the left is the solutions before the step is taken, and on the right is after. You can see that the worst solutions of lengths 51 and 53 are replaced by children that happen to be identical for this step. These children were made from the two parents of length 42. And all of the other solutions besides the worst ones remain the same for the next step. Now let's see what happens in the genetic algorithm for a group of 10 cities and see what result it gives us. Here it appears that the genetic algorithm does give us the best path for 10 cities, or at least something close to the best path. So now let's see what happens when we double the number of cities. Once again, here it looks like we arrive at an answer which is a plausible best path. However, I do not know if it is the actual best path. And once we increase the number of cities even further, it becomes necessary to tweak the parameters that we have for each algorithm in order to improve its performance in each case. Here are the sources that I used in the making of this project. Thank you for watching.